One of the biggest challenges for any African cichlid keeper is dealing with a tank bully or aggression in general. That's what we're going to talk about in this episode of Comment of the Week. Hey folks, it's John with KGTropicals.com bringing you another episode of Comment of the Week. I get all of these comments from all of my different forms of social media. I'll have them all listed at the end of the video. If you want to get your comment in, put it in now because I'm trying to gather up more comments for upcoming videos. So let's get right into today's first comment. Okay, so today's first comment comes from my A Trip to a Fish Farm pod vid that I did a while back, and it reads like this. My goldfish is upside down, and could you tell me why my goldfish is upside down? He did. What? I say he did. Man, don't you know this is a dead body? He be dead, dead, dead. Okay, so today's real comment actually comes from an email sent in to kgtropicals at gmail.com. The email is from Gary Pelster, and it reads like this. Hey, John, I'm sure you've been asked this a lot. I have an OB male peacock that is a stunning fish. Trouble is, he's a tank thug in my 120 gallon. Tried everything. No females, all males, no luck. A lot of tank mates and so on. Put him in a tank by himself and he fades out and is sluggish. I'm just about ready to get rid of him. I've tried about everything you've said in past videos, so I guess the next step is out the door. What's your take on it? Thanks for your information, videos, and your input, Gary. Okay, so let me start off by telling a quick story about something that happened in this tank involving exactly what we're talking about here. If you recall, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video showing you these fish the day after we received them. They had settled into the tank, and I did a detailed video showing you each individual fish. And I described the Nimbichromus living stone eye, which is actually right here, I described him as the tank boss. He was in full breeding dress. It was very obvious that everybody else in the tank had submitted to him, but he wasn't hurting anybody. He wasn't damaging anybody. He wasn't really pushing anybody around. He just made it very evident that he took charge. So we didn't have all that much concern about it. But a couple of days later, we did have a concern, and that was Something was going on in this tank, and we didn't know what it was. Fish were all acting funny. They were breathing heavy, and it was a little bit beyond just stress from the shipment. So I immediately took all of these fish, took them out of the tank, and I put them into these two 55-gallon tanks over here. You can't see them on camera right now. I put them over there, and I said, okay, now let's deal with this water problem. I was actually dealing with this on my own. Lisa comes home a couple hours later and says, oh, by the way, we got a letter from the city saying that there's something going on in the water supply right now, and you should definitely run the water for about 30 seconds prior to doing anything with it. So pretty common sense there. I figured, okay, well, that's what it was. So I did a massive water change in this tank. I let the water run before I filled it back up, and I gave it a day or so, and then I put the fish back in, and they were completely fine. So what does this have to do with what we're talking about here when it comes to aggression. The reason why this applies is because I had taken all of the fish out, put them into other tanks. Once the problem was solved, I brought the fish back and introduced them all back into this tank at the same time. And that living stone eye has not been the same since. He has fit right in. He is no longer the tank boss. Actually, everyone in this tank gets along beautifully. The living stone eye looks more like a living stone eye now, which he didn't look bad before. But what I'm saying is taking them out of here, putting them into there, and then bringing them back a day or so later, he had to restart the whole process. And when he did that, he no longer realized that he was the tank boss and everything went completely back to normal. So why did that happen? Why did he all of a sudden become just another fish? African cichlids are aggressive for a few different reasons. Number one is hierarchy. There is always going to be an alpha male in the tank. I am the king. And usually there's going to be one or two others that are competing for that spot, trying to take it from him. Do you mind if we dance with your dates? Now, sometimes an alpha will emerge and everyone else will just fall in line right behind him. 
just like what happened in this tank when we first put the fish in there. But more than likely, at some point, there is going to be another fish in there that's going to try to test that alpha to try to take the spot. They can start by showing colors, they can flutter in front of them, or they might even start to lip lock with them and push them around. You never really know when this kind of thing is going to happen, when one of those subdominant males is going to change his mind and decide that he wants to take over. But as you can see, hierarchy is one of the main reasons why African cyclids are aggressive. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle! The second cause for African cichlid aggression is territory. These are territorial fish. They like to go into an area, and they like to claim that area as theirs. Especially if there's females in the tank, the male is going to set up a little spot that he's going to call his little den, and that is an area that he will try to entice the females to come back into. He will defend this territory with his life. It is their home, and they will defend it against anyone who comes in. And the third thing that African cichlids are going to fight over is the same thing that human males have been fighting over since the beginning of mankind, and that's girls. Now, most people in the African cichlid hobby try to do this. They try to create an all-male tank. But if you haven't been able to do that yet, and you still have females in your tank, you need to understand that these fish in the tank, the males, are going to be fighting over those females. They're always going to be trying to take dominance over the alpha so that they can be the one that spawns with the females. Because typically, the females will spawn with the alpha male. So understand, with females in the tank, you're giving them something to fight over. So if you have aggression in your tank, if they're just beating each other to death, there's a few things that we'll talk about next that I think should help. So the first thing is, if you have females in your tank and you're not trying to breed them, rehome those females. It's one of the easiest things that you can do to take away what it is that they're fighting over. Now, what if you want to breed them? What if you have a tank full of one particular type of peacock and you want to breed those fish, but you can't get the males to stop fighting? Well, here's what I would do. I would drop down to just one male in that tank, maybe two. This is going to take away all of the competition in the tank. Take all the other males, put them over into another tank or sell them to someone else who wants to breed them and go with the one that is the dominant male and the females will all fall in line and everything will be great. Now, the second thing that I like to do is create confusion in the tank. Here's what I mean. You can move things around in the tank. If you've got a lot of rock formations or you got all these different things stacked up, you can move them around, completely change the interior of your tank, confuse the fish a little bit about where they are, and that might help them to start the whole process of a hierarchy again. Another thing you can do to create confusion is if you have that dominant male who's beating everybody up, take him out and put him into a timeout. Maybe you have a separate tank or a hospital tank or a quarantine tank or something that you can take that male in, stick him in there, and leave him in there for a couple of weeks. I know it sounds mean, but what you're going to do is basically take all of that dominance completely out of him. You're going to allow there to be a new hierarchy start to develop in this tank. Maybe the new boss isn't going to be as mean as the first one. And then when you put the original tank boss, the big bully, you put him back in the tank, hopefully he will fall in line with all the others. If none of this works, one of the things that you can do is what we talked about in the very beginning of this video. This is how my story about the living stone eye applies. Take all of your fish out and completely redo everything in your tank. Now maybe you don't have the luxury of having a couple of extra 55s. Take them out, put them in a buckets or something like that, or a big bin or something. This doesn't need to be for several days. Put them in something else and just completely redo your tank. Everything from top to bottom, rocks, move them around, it doesn't really matter. Just create a completely new environment in the tank for your fish. Leave them in that bin or, or in your spare tanks for as long as you can, and then put them back in. And again, what you're basically doing when you do this is resetting everything. You're resetting the hierarchy. They have to start all over again and come up with a new tank boss. That's exactly what happened here. They were out of this tank for about 24 hours. It, I could have had them out longer, but it took about 24 hours to get things under control, and we put them back in. And in that short a period of time, 
he lost his memory of being the tank boss and everybody's getting along beautifully. There's not a nip in a single fin in this tank. So if you have a different strategy for dealing with African cichlid aggression and I haven't talked about it, put it down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. I know there's a ton of different ways that people handle this kind of stuff. But like I said, the way I look at it is if you take away what it is that they're fighting over, you should have peace and calm in the tank and everybody should get along just like they do in this one. And there you have it. I hope that this video has helped you to understand a little bit more about dealing with African cichlid aggression. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, why don't you click that like button for us? It sure does help us out a whole lot. And don't forget, you can subscribe so that you receive future videos. Just click that red button right there. It's real easy. All of the future videos that we put out, you'll get a notification sent to you so you don't miss any of them. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to talking to you again next week with a brand new comment.